There is nothing more annoying than hearing words that you don't really understand, technical words or jargon to just make everything sound more confusing. So we're going to go through a few words and myths around the techie kind of Wi-Fi world and make it all more clear to you and to me. Yeah, so, I, I work in two, uh, two worlds where we throw around jargon all the time. Mm. Being a marketing person, we throw around so much jargon. Yeah. And then being in tech as well, obviously, we throw away, uh, throw around so many jargon yeah. words that people don't understand. Exactly. So I think I think what we've got here is we've got the most um, requested top ten sort yeah. of jargon definitions uh, to kind yeah. of go through. So we we'll talk about each one of them in turn. Uh, as we go through. Okay, let's start. First one is modem versus router. Explain, please. What is a modem and what? how is it different to a router? Well... They look the same a lot of the time. They're, they're similar, similar looking devices. You, you, you'll never see antennae on a, on, on a modem, okay. let's say, unless it's a combined modem router unit. But then you you also don't get antennae on all routers. Five an internal antennae. But you don't see them, go, that's what I'm saying. That go around the spherical shape to give you the best coverage. So you've got the internal antennae there all pointing in different okay. directions. I get it, all right. Okay, what's the difference between a modem and a router? Modem is basically the device that takes the signal that is sent you by the ISP yeah. from, from analog to digital. It has one function, bring that analog signal in, turn it into a digital signal so that your router can amplify it across. Okay. The router is the device that basically will allocate the Wi-Fi across all your devices at okay. home. So it, it, it gives everything in your home a separate DHCP address okay. and it will say you're going to get two megs, you're going to get two megs, you're going to get okay. two megs. All right, okay, I get it. That that makes sense. Now, I feel like I've had a router without a modem before. Would that be the case? This is a router without modem. Okay. I, I How would you know if you needed a modem or not? Well, if, if you've got a combined um, modem and router, you'll have one device that's providing yeah. your internet. If you've got a modem and router that are separate, you'll have two devices yeah, that my, they'll my plug in separately. I get that, but my point is, do you need a motor, modem and a router? Yes. Okay, fine. Yes. Right, that's all I wanted to say. The, the router cannot work without a modem because right. the signal that is sent in is analog and it yeah. needs to change Digitalized. it to digital. A modem never needs to be upgraded unless it breaks. A I love router, this. A router can be constantly upgraded as we change Wi-Fi standards, as, as speeds get faster as people get more and more devices. I love it. Okay, the second one is Ethernet. Ethernet. Which in my head is something very different than what it is. But anyway, Ethernet to me sounds like a word from another universal planet. Do you know what I mean? Ethernet. Ethernet ports on the back of your router. Yeah. So, so, so basically, Ethernet is um, it's the standard of connection that you use when you use a wired connection. Right. Okay. It's simply the right. It's okay. simply a wired, a, a wired, a wired. connection. Um, so your if you have a separate device, which we talked about, modems versus routers, you'll have a connection into the back of your router. Yeah. A wired connection from your modem into the Ethernet port. Yeah. And then you'll have connections coming out, Ethernet connections coming out of the back of your router okay. to your various devices or to a switch okay. if you need more devices. Okay. If your router is near to your um, TV, you best off connecting to your TV via a wired connection because wiring, a wired connection offers more speed uh, better stability and also security, which uh, cannot be underestimated. Okay, and you could also plug your Ethernet cable straight into your laptop. Yep, you can plug your Ethernet cable so, in straight into your laptop. So my your your, yeah. your your desktop, your PlayStation Five, your streaming box, yeah. all of those devices. And and our advice to you is because all it takes is a Cat five or Cat six cable with an RJ forty five connector. Yeah, wire up as much as you can. Okay. Um, and wire up the devices that you want to be given priority um, by just, your router. I'm just going to put this out here mm. that ideally in a home you don't want loads of cables. It does no. look awful. Yep. 
I'm just going to say that. That's why people aren't doing this more often. No, it and, looks and that's awful. Absolutely, and, and that's absolutely fine. But for instance, um, if your router is next to your TV, next behind your PlayStation yeah. 5, behind your, right. the, then you can easily wire them all up and keep those wires. And you can buy Ethernet cables on Amazon anywhere, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Super and easy. It, you'll get Ethernet cables with most devices that can be connected via an Ethernet. And they'll have the little ends on them already. RJ45 connectors. Fine. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Bandwidth. It's not some kind of like doo 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 doo, no? No, it's, 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 it's really it's not. Really it's really not, right. Okay. Um, so bandwidth, you can never have no. enough bandwidth when it, when, when it comes to internet because no. bandwidth is basically the width of connection that, that you've got coming right. in. Um, so everybody, everybody wants more bandwidth because it gives you more speed and more ability to connect uh, more devices what, to your house. What exactly is bandwidth? Uh, so, in the terms of networking, bandwidth responds to the maximum amount of, of um, data that can be transferred over a network uh, okay. in, in a period of time. Ah, so, I see. in right. general, it will be measured in megabits per second. Right. So, you'll hear me, I, uh, I will say I've got 80 megabits per second. Right. The, the very lucky people who have super fast connections their data is measured in gigabits per like second. Like fiber, for example. Well, fi fiber is, 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 just, is just a product and fiber wow. can be just 80 megs like okay, okay. I, I have. What, what you want is you want gigabit fiber. You want gigabit fiber. Gigabit fiber, then your speeds will be measured in, okay. uh, in, in, in into, into the gigabits. And very often your office will have a 10 gigabit connection which okay. is shared amongst, okay. uh, amongst the staff members. Oh, okay, that's easier than I thought it was. Okay, I get that. Next one is channels. Channels, what do we mean by channels when it's not TV channels? We don't really talk about channels anymore, do we? Um, Wi-Fi channels. Right, Wi-Fi so, channels. So, so there's a couple of different Wi-Fi channels and um, if, you've, if you've ever heard me talk about 3G, 4G, 5G in the past, um, Wi-Fi channels are similar to that because yeah. you've got 2.4 gigahertz, yeah. 5 gigahertz and the new 6 gigahertz okay. standards. Okay. So 2.4 has been around for years and years and years and it has the furthest broadcasting spectrum because it's the slowest channel to connect to. Okay. So at home, in general, your router will be broadcasting 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Okay. On the 2.4 channel, you'll want things connected like your smart dishwasher, your smart watch, your um, devices that don't... Okay. Create, uh, don't need a lot of speed. I see, okay, I get it. But they'll be constantly connected to the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. Right. The five gigahertz spectrum, which has a smaller broadcasting range, but a faster speed, you'll want things like your laptop, your TV. If you can't wire them up, you'll want them mm. on that spectrum because they will be the faster okay. devices and they'll benefit the most out of having that extra connection. I see. If we move on to the six gigahertz spectrum, which was released as part of Wi-Fi 6E, right. uh, which is the newest sort of standard of Wi-Fi at the moment, people are talking about Wi-Fi 7, but it's not really ratified. It's not really here yet. Okay. Um, the six gigahertz spectrum is as, as you can no doubt guess, faster than the five right. gigahertz spectrum. Yeah. It has a lot less traffic running through it because it's newer and it has an even shorter broadcast range. Okay. Uh, but the reason that we're saying to everybody that Wi-Fi 6E probably isn't really worth the upgrade at the moment is that six, the six gigahertz spectrum in the EU isn't as utilized as it is in America and Asia. We've been slower to adopt, probably because of some sort of commission rules or, or, or some other things that haven't been ratified as yet. Right. And there's a distinct lack of devices that are compatible that. with 6E. Okay. So we don't have to really be worrying about that or thinking about it yet? No, I mean, if, if you have devices that are compatible with it, you will benefit from, from 6E, but uh, at the moment, I'd say the, the upgrade is, is minimal for most average consumers because their devices won't be able to work with it. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. Amazing! Wi-Fi standards. 
So um, the Wi-Fi standards, uh, they're, they're set out by the, 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 the Wi-Fi board. So, yeah. so they're the ones who bring everything together. There's IE and a few other bits and bobs there. Um, we won't go into it fully, but what they do is every, every now and again, we'll have new um, in, inventions and new, I'm trying to avoid saying the word standards because we would use that, but new, uh, features yeah. that's the word I'm looking for yeah. new features yeah. that will make the next standard of Wi-Fi better than the previous okay. so we've been through we won't talk about all of the previous sort of iterations but if we go back to uh, Wi-Fi 4 or wireless N um, we then moved on to Wi-Fi 5 which was commonly known as Wi-Fi AC yeah but now we're on Wi-Fi 6 which is also known as Wi-Fi AX, but we seem okay. to be calling it Wi-Fi 6. Okay. And we just talked about 6E um, just, yeah. just a moment ago. And then 7, we'll, we'll be seeing more and more about 7. So so Wi-Fi standard is, oh. is, is, the, is the iteration. Oh, and every, every iteration of Wi-Fi brings new features, new speeds, higher capacity, Great. And, and new it's a bits positive that make thing. it unique. Yes. It's a positive change, yeah. it's a yeah. positive kind of progression. The feature set is what makes Wi-Fi 6 better than Wi-Fi Improved. 5. Improved. So you don't have to understand what BSS colouring are, you don't have to understand 1024 um, QM, yeah, I get you just it. have to know that each set. And with Wi-Fi 7, uh, one of the bigger advantages is going to be the combination of Wi-Fi channels, which we mm. just talked about which is why we did channels first, because with Wi-Fi 7, you're going to be able to combine two channels together. Okay, what, 6 and 7? No, so Wi-Fi channels we talked about, 2.4 gigahertz, oh, okay, 5 gigahertz right, and 6 gigahertz. Yeah. You're going to be able to combine two well, that channels makes sense. together that makes sense, to give you they have the, all the features. All the features. Which all I kind of feel that that's the kind of thing that annoys me when I do an um, software update on my iPhone. Mm. I feel like I'm getting more, but I feel like I lose a lot as well when I upgrade each time. Do you know what I mean? Is yeah. it a bit like that? No, you don't lose you don't when, lose you, when you upgrade your Wi-Fi standards. That's great. Because, because the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum is still there, which is basically where we started right. the whole thing on. That's great. The, the, only, the, the only thing that's happened to um, 2.4 gigahertz is that Moon Mimo was added to 2.4 gigahertz, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is, again, I won't get super technical, Let's not but get into that. multi-user, multiple users on 2.4 gigahertz at the same time, whereas, it, when 2.4 gigahertz started, you get some, you get your data, then you get your data, then you get your data. What Moomimo does is, you get data, you get data, you get data, all at the same time. Okay. So, so is nothing, it... nothing is taken away in Wi-Fi okay. six or Wi-Fi seven. It, it just gets better. You're not losing features and Perfect. stuff that you had before. That's all we need to know. We need to know that it's going to get better each time, not worse, and you're not going to lose any features. Yeah. I love it. Mesh and SSID. Let's go mesh first. What is mesh? Simply please. You can't define mesh without really talking about SSIDs because it's one of the biggest um, features of mesh is the ability to just have one SSID across your house. Okay. So let's do them both at the same time. And basically um, what an SSID is, is a service set identifier, which means nothing to anyone. anyone. But in practical terms, SSID is just the name of your network. And it's, it, it's, it's just an identification tag for you so that you can go on your phone and you can easily pick out your network um, from a list yeah. of all of the networks that have been broadcast locally. Love that. So if, I didn't if even you know you could do that. I love that. Change the name of your network. Yeah, I didn't even know you could do that. How many videos have we done together? I know. But sometimes I forget these things. I love it. But Rebecca, renaming them. Is just, uh, just recommend that you just give your um, give an your obvious network name. An, an, an obvious and I don't think a lot of people name. do that. But I'm looking through the list that comes up. No, and I, I'm I, like they are random things that people have not chosen. Yeah, I do see a few. Um, a few. Unnamed most of them. ISPs with random letters. Most afterwards, of them. But... Most of them are random. Anyway, you yeah. can rename your SSID, and I highly recommend it. Good yes, idea. Yes, you you, you 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 probably should re yeah. rename. SSID for easy identification. So, so the reason for doing SSID and mesh at the same time is that if you've got a big house and you've got a router and you've got an extender or a power line, one of the older sort of style um, setups to extend the internet across your home, it's very likely that you, you have more than one SSID because extenders extend the signal, but they also create a new network. 
Um, so what you'll find is that if you are roaming across your house, if you're moving from one room to the next, you will often drop off of, of the Wi-Fi as you move from your main router to be connected to the extender. Oh yeah, we talked about this. It's yeah. not it's not ideal if you're downloading a file, it's not ideal if you are on, on a, a video call, call if, if, if anything like that, because you will drop off Yeah. Um, because the connection over isn't seamless. Yeah. The, 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 the beauty of a mesh network is that you get you get the one device and within that device there will probably be uh, within that family of devices there will probably be several options for you to extend via mesh so you can have the device you can have an extender you can have another device you can have a main router uh, that is better and then a, um, a a lower level model in a different room where perhaps the broadcast isn't uh, isn't as needed. So is mesh just the capability of connecting multiple devices to make a sort of ecosystem of Wi-Fi connection? Yes. Right. Yes. So okay. so so with um. With, I get it. I, I had a feeling Pro. it was some kind of like crazy like beaming technology or something but like it, that. But, but it is. But it, it is well, after it, after you've created the, the ecosystem, right? Yeah, because because the Wi-Fi um, obviously Transmits it beams from, from one location to the next. It's a bit like being in a rounders team, like and having like base one, base two, base three, base four. Yeah, and, like, and the person who's running around is the Wi-Fi. Yeah, and, and, and in each in each case yeah. moving from base um, from from start point to base one to base yeah. two to base three is seamless. Yeah. Because you, you run around and you connect to yeah, you connect one. to one. So you stop at one. Yeah. You move on, you connect to two. Yeah. You stop at two. You move it. on to three. You connect to three. I get and the it. handover between the three is, is, is and seamless. And a home so run. And when it goes round and you've got your home run. Well you have to do them all in one go to get a home run. Well exactly, but, but you know what I'm great, saying. Great great analogy, so thank you. I get it, I get it. Isn't that the point? <laughs> Parental controls. This is something I don't think many people realize that they have accessibility to when they buy tech. Mm. Um, I don't know if they know that they've got it on their laptops, I don't think they know they've got it on their routers. So let's talk about what parental controls that they can they can use on via this technology. Well, basically, basically parental controls have, have made the list um, because as, as Sophie said, it's, it's it's become something that's a staple of, of, of modern um, routers nowadays. So you, you'll often see, even on TV adverts and, and, and other uh, forms of advertising, people advertising products that will allow them to be able to more effectively monitor and control their, their children's access to the internet. We all know the dangers that, that dwell within the internet without going into them on this video so parents have taken a much more active role um, the one way they can do that is via um, parental controls yeah so what what parental controls will do for you is allow you to effectively blacklist uh, websites that you don't want your children to visit okay um, such may as be, youtube sure um, if you want to. social media but then far more far more um, other sites than that far more dangerous sites of course, than that exist of course. Um, and they will allow you to make sure that your children aren't surfing the internet after a pre-agreed time. Say, for instance, the Wi-Fi access goes off at 9 p.m. Yeah, so they have, you can put time limits on. Yeah, you you can and, and well, yes, you can you can turn the internet off at a certain time every night, or you can allow your children to access the internet for an hour and a half. A day, or for something. instance, a yeah. day. Yeah. Yes, and and that will be timed. That's brilliant. And how do they access their parental credit? How do they actually do that? Well, or is that another video? No, it's 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 not another video. It's it's actually very easy. I mean, what we would suggest is that um, if you're looking for a new router and parental controls is something that you really want on your on your device, make sure it's part of the app. Okay. Um, because as we've talked about going through, even when I'm defining the top ten channels, um, I still have to say I have to use other jargon words yeah, I know. to describe what that jargon yes. word is. So That's we have to go down. We have to go down another rabbit hole. Yeah. So with um, with parental controls, you do not want it to be part of the advanced setup of your router because yeah. that requires you to log in to the router yeah. via the device address on a laptop okay. and then access parental controls that way. You okay. need the parental controls, especially if you're not brilliant, um, yeah. to be part of the app. 
Right. Because fine. as soon as they're part of an app, it's very, very easy. basic and easy to set up. Okay, that, that makes absolute sense. That's yeah, and I think most people are very good at using and understanding how an app works it's, these days. It's just, like super simple, right? There's, super a, there, simple. there's an app for that. There's an so app for it. There's there's an app for everything. So yeah, so I love that. Um so apps come as standard as pretty much every every D-Link route that we have, whether it's SQL Pro or Aquila Pro, we yeah. always have an app and we'll always have the parental control awesome. sequence as part of that because we know how important they are to people. Okay, brilliant. Okay. I think while I've got you here, mm -hmm. I might just ask you a few questions based on some frequent myths that have been online about certain things. I'm just going to test your knowledge. Uh, are, okay. they, are they about Wi-Fi now, or are they about other things? Because <laughs> I might get a bit worried about where this is going. Don't worry, they're all about Wi-Fi. <laughs> sure, okay? well, let's, let, let's test. My first one that I found, one of the most um, um, popular searches online mm -hmm. is, can you cool down your router so it works better and faster if you put it in the fridge? Wow. Honestly. Um, I just, uh, just to make a public, self uh, public safety announcement, please don't put your router in the fridge. <laughs> Honestly. It's not going to cool it down and it's not going to make it work faster. Well, and your antennas might get lodged in the chicken or something, but Bad please idea. please do not put your router in the fridge. Yeah, routers, <laughs> routers are defined to be on 24-7, seven, seven days a week. They, they work best when they're running at a higher temperature um, and interruptions. Um, I'm sure that um, people switch their routers off at night. It's, it's entirely not optimal. If you turn it off at night, will it work better in the morning? Does it kind of rest it? No, no. Okay. Please, please leave your router on all, 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 all night. Don't turn it off. Um, uh, they, they use pennies, fractions of pennies of, of power. Um, they, they, they really don't. And they run much better when the temperature gets going. And you'll always have that power up period every morning yeah. where the modem powers up, then the router powers and up and you're about, and, and, and it can, and, and what happens then if it doesn't connect properly, you're, you're on the phone and yeah. you lose a lot of time. So Fine. don't put your router in the fridge, don't put it in the oven, don't put I've it one more. outside in the snow, just, just leave it on. Okay, another one that I heard that is another one that actually I, it doesn't sound as crazy as the fridge one. Mm. Um, is it true that if you are in the direct line of your microwave, does that interfere with your Wi-Fi? Well, yes, it does. Um, and there's numerous household devices that can interfere with the transmission of your, of your router because like a lot of modern day devices, it runs on radio waves okay. and, and everything transmits a different spectrum. Uh, so your, um, your microwave, your, your baby monitor um, and all sorts of devices like that that operate on radio waves can interfere with each other. Okay. We, we talked about BSS colouring a little bit earlier, which was Wi-Fi 6's attempt to clean up the spectrum that stops the interference because one thing that can also interfere with your Wi-Fi network is your neighbor's Wi-Fi network. Okay, yes, all right, that's interesting. So BSS coloring that. injects a, a color into your signal to mm. keep your signal separate from, from the signal next door. Okay. So yes, so don't, don't put your router near a microwave, don't have it near a baby monitor, and there's also other pieces of advice such as don't put it near a large body of water. So don't put your your router next to a fish tank um, because radio waves find it difficult to penetrate water. Interesting. If That's you, very if you, interesting. If you think about communications with a submarine. So don't put your router in a fish in, in a bowl of water. Well, don't put it in the bowl of water, definitely, because that's okay, that's good. not good at all. No. But don't put it don't put it near your fish tank, for instance, because that will absorb. And the last the one, which I know might take us down the rabbit hole somewhat, but I know you do love a conspiracy theory. Do I? Should we be turning off our Wi-Fi on our phones next to our beds at night? Um, but for, for a start, I, I wouldn't advocate having mobile phones in bedrooms at all. Um, the blue light um, that, a, that a phone produces is, isn't conducive to sleep. But you can switch your phone to black and white. 
Sure. Yeah. That's what my husband has, so sure. that he actually looks at it less because he said it's way less exciting to look at. So and, 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 and I'm sure there's blue light filters that yeah, and, and are, all that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, just advocating. Um, but is it but, unsafe to have Wi-Fi on all the time near your body? Um, you know? No. No. Thank you so much for joining us for this kind of demystifying of technical jargon. We've had lots of fun um, talking to you about this today and we really hope that it's helped. Thank you so much for watching and from my dear friend, Alan. Peace out. Peace.